This is very recent, just about a year or so ago. UK, the British government spent $400 million in developing this Antarctic explorer, and they asked the crowds to name the vessel. So they turned to crowdsourcing, they turned to the, the citizens of the UK and they asked them, what would you name this explorer? And the winner was Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> now here's what I want you to consider. When I tell people this, a lot of them will be yeah, but not that many people really participated. It wasn't a good statistic random sample or whatever you want to think about. Or some people say, yeah, okay, that, that you know, was number one, but number two was close behind. Let me show you the top 10 winners. Bodie McBoatface had 124,000 votes. The second place was a small fraction of that with 34,000. I want to point out a couple of these other clever names here. If you're into the Olympics, we got the Usain Boat. And I want everybody to sing with me. I like big boats, and I cannot lie. So look, here's what's happening, is we're using a suggestion box mentality. We're using this out of the box mentality to solve problems. Look, this, this is to me, the way most suggestions box, boxes look. It says this box usually yields one or two sensible suggestions, four or five stupid ideas, dozens of immoral suggestions, and hundreds of candy wrappers. <laughs> I promise you this is the state of most suggestion boxes. So what's really going on here? When we create suggestion boxes, when we ask people for their ideas, we're still asking them to solve a problem. But the problem is typically a big, broad, abstract problem. For example, how can we improve the organization? Or how can we improve productivity and efficiency? Or what new services should we focus on? Or what processes should we, or of course, what new technology should we use? But these are all big, broad, abstract questions. And they invite big, broad, abstract thinking, and which tends to be irrelevant thinking. So I want you to think back to your childhood for a moment. Goldilocks and the three bears. Goldilocks goes in a house, three beds. One bed is too soft, one bed is too hard, one bed is just right. This accurately describes the ways that we tend to ask questions as human beings. We have two default mechanisms. Default mechanism number one is we ask questions that are too soft. That is, they're too abstract. How do I stop the flow of oil? What new services should we offer? How do we improve our productivity? These are all abstract questions that invite abstract and irrelevant thinking. On the flip side, sometimes we ask questions that are too hard. That is, they are too specific. They are too detailed. It might be a solution masquerading as a question, or it is a question that is so narrowly defined that the odds of finding a solution is so slim. So our goal here is to ask questions that are just right. If something is too abstract, we need to deconstruct it. We need to break it down into smaller pieces. If something is too specific, we need to make it less so. Einstein reputedly said, if I had an hour to save the world, I would spend 59 minutes defining the problem, one minute finding solutions. That's 59 minutes defining the problem, one minute finding solutions. From my experience, most people, most organizations, most teams, most departments, most functions are spending 60 minutes solving problems that aren't all that important. Or if they're important, they haven't taken the time to reframe the question to be able to find the solution quickly. It's all about the question. And as I said before, if we go back to the Goldilocks principle, it's not about thinking outside the box. That expression came about because of a brain teaser. It has nothing to do with innovation. Anybody who tells you to think outside the box, I say they should get their advice from this cat <laughs> who says, I don't care what anyone else says. I do my best thinking inside the box. And here's what I want you to take away from all of this. 
Don't think outside the box. Find a better box. The issue is not the expansiveness of your thinking. Broader thinking invites a lot of wasted energy. We don't have time to waste our energy on solving abstract questions. But if you're spending your time trying to get clothes clean, maybe you can keep them clean. Instead of speeding up bags, we can slow down the passengers. We can change questions in a way that allow us to find solutions that weren't apparent. And here's the really cool thing is when you change the questions, sometimes the answers become obvious when they weren't before. The question is, to me, the key to innovation.